Hi there, Chris here. My husband and I recently cleaned out our closet and there was a lot of clothes that probably were a little too far gone to donate. So I was putting them in our textile recycling service and thought, why not try to get one last go out of them before they head off to be recycled? So I'm going to be making a fun throw size quilt for the couch. For this project, I am going to be using the Go Outside the Box pattern book. This is the book I used for my second randomly generated quilt. And I will be making all of the blocks the same, and I've chosen cups and saucers. So I'm going to be making nine blocks, so it'll be three by three. And I'll use my 12 inch mix and match cube, and that's going to give me 18 inch blocks. I am also going to sash them. I don't know what size sashing yet, so that'll give it a little more size, but it'll just end up being a really good throw size quilt. So here's primarily what I will be using. We have a couple suit jackets that we found had some little holes in them. Um, some lightweight sweaters, some jeans, some polo shirts. So for anything that's stretchy, if you've ever made like a t-shirt quilt, you know that can be really difficult. So what I will be using is this June Taylor t-shirt quilt fusible interfacing. It is a woven interfacing that has no stretch to it. So this irons onto the back of anything stretchy and will make it not stretchy anymore. So I'm going to go through and start cutting this up. What I'm going to do is actually cut out my interfacing in the rough size that I need to cut on my dies. And then I will fuse this onto the backside of the material, cut it out from there. Because I'm working with old clothing, nothing's going to be square. We're going to have, you know, sleeve shaped pieces, body shaped pieces. It's going to be all kind of willy nilly. So having these cut into the rough size squares is going to make it a lot easier. Since I do need to make nine of the blocks, what I'm going to do is just cut out enough pieces for nine blocks. This consists of squares, flying geese, and half square triangles. I'm just going to cut a bunch and then I will mix them together when I go to make the quilt. Anything here that is the light color, I will be using suit jacket material. And anything that's dark, I will be using something that was previously stretchy, so sweaters, polo shirts, anything like that. So let's get started. So this again is the June Taylor T-shirt quilt fusible interfacing. It is 100% cotton. It is woven, so there's no stretch to it. But it's basically a super lightweight cotton fabric, and then the other side has little glue dots on it that you'll fuse to the fabric. So I'm using my 12 inch cube, so I need nine seven inch squares for the center. That is going to be knit. Half of the half square triangles will be knit. So I need 16 seven and a half inch squares. These will also be knit. Okay, let's get cutting. And these are rough cut, so if you're a little off, it's fine. Let's see, first we need seven inch squares, and I need nine of those. I'm just leaving the selvage on. It'll get cut off when I cut these. And next I need seven and a half inch squares and I will need 18 of those. Seven and three quarters, and we need two per block. All right, we've got all the interfacing cut out, so now I can start fusing this to the fabric. Those are center. Those are the HSTs. And the fine geese. Set those aside and we'll start on the centers. So to break down the clothing, I'm just gonna cut right along the seams as close as I can get. I'm not going to fuss too much about it. Okay. 
This is somewhat of an experiment because all of these clothes are different weights, like the thicknesses of the different materials. So we're gonna see how well we can get them sewn together. And you wanna make sure you are fusing the interfacing onto the back side of the fabric. Okay, the centers are ready to go. So I'm just gonna repeat that with my half square triangles and flying geese. The half square triangles, you do need to make sure that you have in pairs because each block will need four of the same half square triangle. Unless you wanna do it really scrappy, that's fine too. I do like to cut off any ribbing because it will pull in weird directions. So I just try to get this as flat as possible. So since of these are clothes that we've previously worn, they've already been shrunk and any color bleed will have happened, anything like that. But I did give them all one last wash in really hot water, um, especially things like the suits, because I just want to make sure that there will be no surprises. We have a lot of different materials going into this from 100% cotton, um, I don't think there's any wool, but there's definitely acrylic blend in some of the sweaters. The suits have polyester, so things to be aware of. I do also have this orange denim that I want to incorporate, but it does not need to be interfaced. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it out, but it again doesn't need to be interfaced. I'm just going to use this for a size reference. All right, now we can take this over to the iron and get all of the fusible interfacing fused to the scraps. So for all the fabric that doesn't need interfacing, I am going to use the June Taylor Starch Savvy just so that it's not too flimsy to sew with the ones that have been interfaced. So that's these four right here. Give them a spritz and let them soak in. All right, those are all ready. So now let's go cut out the second half of the half square triangles, which will be suit fabric, and the outer sides of the flying geese, which will also be suit fabric. So now we need to cut out all of the light pieces. They're not gonna be light, they're gonna be the dark gray of the suit, but we need to cut out half square triangles. And these are also half square triangles, but smaller. These are six inch, these are three inch. So for the larger half square triangles, we need 18 seven and a half inch squares.
right, that is everything for the half squared triangles. So now for the outside points of the flying geese, it is this half square triangle, four and three quarter squares, basically five inch square. 72 of them. All right, we got all of our suit jacket cut for the half square triangles, for the actual half square triangles, and for the flying geese. So some of these already had interfacing on them just as part of the suit. So those I'm not going to worry about, but any that don't, they're a little more flimsy. So I am going to go starch these. I have a lot to cut today, so I'm going to be using my Go Big electric cutter to save my arms a little bit. For the sweater pieces, since they are thicker, plus have the interfacing, I'm only going to cut two layers of these at a time. So these are all my centers. I'll move on to the flying geese. And now onto the half square triangles. We'll start with the big ones first. Now for the large half square triangle halves that are the suit, I can stack up more layers. And now for the smaller half square triangles, I actually have two of the same die, so I can cut them twice as fast. I got everything cut in 35 minutes. Now let's move on to the sewing. We're gonna start with our half square triangles. So we're just gonna take one of the, like the sweater side and one of the suit side and sew them together, right sides together. And rather than trying to press my seams open, I'm just going to press them to the side of the suit jacket fabric because it's lighter weight, um, especially because the sweater has the interfacing on it, it'll just be easier to do that. So I'm gonna get these all sewn. And now we'll move on to the flying geese. So for these, what we'll need to do is sew one of the half square triangles onto one of the quarter square triangles. So those will get sewn right sides together. We'll press it back and then we will sew the second one on the other side. Okay. 
So we'll do this and then we'll press it. And again, I'm just pressing towards the suit fabric because it is lighter weight, so it'll press easier that way. And then we sew on the other side. And there's our flying geese unit. So I'll make the rest of those. And now that the quilt top is fully pieced, it is time to quilt it. So today I'll be using some Lux Cuddle Minky from Shannon Fabrics for the backing. And I didn't realize when I started loading it, but this was actually a four yard cut. And I only needed about two yards for this quilt. So I'm just going to measure out how long I need and roll up just the amount that I need. And then I will attach the bottom edge with my red snappers and trim it from there. I am also using a layer of batting. This is the Quilter's Dream Green Batting, which is 100% recycled polyester. Now I can just baste on my quilt top. It ended up being about 60 inches square, so good size throw. And I'm going to quilt it with a design that to me is reminiscent of a cable knit sweater to kind of keep in the theme of the sweaters I used for the top. And now it's time to trim the quilt. 
I pulled out my lint roller because I thought it would be helpful with all of the fuzz. But this is the Lux Cuddle from Shannon Fabrics. So the nap is actually a little bit longer than the cuddle that I used on the back of my Ripple Bloom quilt. So this made a little bit more of a mess. So I just let it happen and I swept everything onto the floor and then swept it up from there. Not a big deal. Now for the binding, I decided not to go with upcycled material because I wasn't sure how the thickness would play into it. But I did find this in my stash. It is Kona Black Cherry, and I think it plays off the colors of the sweaters very well. And I'm just going to use my AccuQuilt Go Cutter and my two and a half inch strip die to cut out the strips for this. And I need six strips by width of fabric total. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail on attaching the binding to this quilt. I actually recently posted a tutorial on binding a quilt that had minky for the back. So I will link that in the description so you can go check that out. I did though want to show off my new labels that I just got. So I had these custom printed and they will get sewn into the corner only so I don't have to come back and hand tack along the other two edges like I did with my old labels. But basically, I will sew the binding onto the back side of the quilt, and then I'm going to take it over to the iron and press it to the front side and then do a top stitch to secure it in place. And it's done. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It was a little challenging. Some of the sweaters, like this one, were a little thicker. And then the suits, next time I would probably interface them, not because they needed to be stabilized, more so to help prevent the fraying of the edges. I did quilt it with this fun kind of loopy design to try and make it look kind of like a cable knit sweater. I thought that would kind of play in with all of the materials that were used. It was a little more challenging because of the Lux Minky that I used on the back. It's a higher pile, so it was really slick, but it wasn't terribly difficult to work with. I probably could have used some pins or clips to help me along there. I also got to use my new quilt labels. So if you didn't see my unboxing, I designed these new labels to just be sewn in the corner. There's no stitching on the face of the quilt. And because it's on the bias, I did add an extra piece of fabric from the front of the quilt just to give it a little stability. So I still need to write all of my information in here, but I made these little peekaboos on the inside of the label just for a little added fun. So I will put links in the description below with all of the different products I use from the June Taylor fusible interfacing and starch, as well as the AccuQuilt dies and the pattern book I used to make the quilt. Thanks for watching. See you next time.